I spent a lot of time worrying about tick-borne disease. And living in the Northeast, I'm not alone. According to the CDC, about 300,000 Americans get Lyme disease each year. Lyme is the most commonly reported vector-borne illness in the U.S. Unfortunately, Lyme is the most common of a long list of tick-borne diseases, many posing even more serious health problems. Few areas are as afflicted as the islands of Martha's Vineyard and Nantucket. These islands have some of the highest rates of infection in the nation. This project aims to safeguard these island communities by reducing the incidence of tick-borne disease with a solution that may one day prevent new cases on the mainland. The risk of tick-borne disease has grown as a result of environmental changes that have significantly increased the number of white-tailed deer, deer ticks, and white-footed mice. White-footed mice are the primary reservoir of many of the pathogens that cause tick-borne disease. Perhaps surprisingly, white-footed mice are not born infected with these pathogens. They become infected when bitten by an infected tick. Ticks are also not born infected. They usually become infected when they feed from an infected rodent, which is most often an infected white-footed mouse. So these pathogens persist in the environment, being passed back and forth between mice and ticks. Mice don't suffer from these diseases, so we probably wouldn't care too much about any of this, except for the fact that ticks bite us too. We're working to break the disease transmission cycle between white-footed mice, deer ticks, and the pathogens they carry. We believe that if every mouse produced antibodies from birth against the bacteria that causes Lyme and other antibodies against ticks, the reservoir of the Lyme-causing pathogen and many of the other pathogens that cause tick-borne disease would likely collapse. We plan to endow mice with protective antibodies derived from other white-footed mice. Interestingly, a small percentage of the mice on Martha's Vineyard and Nantucket already produce antibodies against the bacteria that causes Lyme. In the lab, we're taking the immunity that some mice have evolved naturally, and we're encoding it into the mouse genome so that it can be passed on. This approach is unique because normally animals cannot pass their immunity onto their offspring. Each new organism's immune system has to create its own antibodies from scratch. But in order to spread these antibody genes efficiently through the mouse population, we devised a way to make antibodies heritable. These are the two types of antibodies we plan to use to protect mice from tick-borne disease. We plan to encode anti-Lyme antibodies that kill the bacteria that causes Lyme disease. We're also working to isolate a second type of antibody that should literally prevent deer ticks from feeding on white-footed mice. So if this antibody works as we hope, it should reduce the tick population. Next, we plan to test these mice on a small uninhabited island where they could introduce their immunity to the native mouse population simply by breeding with the local mice. If this approach is broadly supported by the citizens of Martha's Vineyard and Nantucket, mice could be released one day onto their islands to reduce the number of infected ticks and protect the community from new cases of tick-borne disease. So how do you make a disease-resistant mouse? Very generally speaking, engineering a tick-borne disease-resistant mouse involves vaccinating mice, isolating the most protective mouse antibodies, and integrating those antibodies into the mouse genome. This process has been particularly challenging because so little is known about the white-footed mouse. The well-studied house mouse and the white-footed mouse haven't shared a common ancestor in 25 million years. In fact, the house mouse is more closely related to the rat than the white-footed mouse. So unfortunately, we can't easily look to another species for a biological roadmap. I need to emphasize that we are not building a gene drive for Martha's Vineyard or Nantucket. We plan to use CRISPR as a molecular scalpel to insert our antibody genes, but CRISPR itself will not be integrated into our engineered mice. Without CRISPR, our mice are gonna lack the essential component of a gene drive. Thinking forward, however, CRISPR is likely to become a component of the solution. On the mainland, we simply can't release enough mice. Our lab is developing self-regulating gene drives that can turn any town into an island and get, by giving the community the ability to release mice without affecting the neighboring towns. Community engagement is a core element of this project because our research affects the shared environment. 
and nobody can opt out of depending on the natural world. Most research is conducted behind closed doors by a small group of people with limited connection to the community. We're doing something entirely different. We've been transparent from the start and community guided from day one. Uniquely, we approached the communities of Martha's Vineyard and Nantucket before conducting any research in the lab. Part of our research direction was literally established during community meetings on these islands. For example, the decision to focus our efforts on reducing the tick population was chosen by show of hands and outspoken support in a series of community meetings on Martha's Vineyard and Nantucket. We are guided by local steering committees made up of community representatives who are empowered to stop the project on their island at any time. One day, the citizens of Martha's Vineyard and Nantucket will hopefully have the opportunity to vote to decide if they'd like to release immune mice on their islands, whatever they decide. We believe that their vote and their participation is an important step towards a better model of science.